backhand surfing. More often than not, I get feedback that surfers feel so much more awkward on their backhand and that forehand surfing is far more comfortable. But why is this? Whilst there are a number of contributing factors, one key position on our backhand is largely responsible for our backhand mistakes. And this is what we're gonna dive into today. What it is, why it's negatively impacting our surfing and how to correct this for your next session. I also scored some perfect logging waves to demonstrate and give this a practice, which we'll come to later. My name is Ben Considine, and this is the Sunday Glide. Hey guys, so the other day I scored a great logging session when I was on my road trip and thankfully got footage of it. I've grown up surfing my backhand, being a goofy footer in the land of rights. And so today I wanted to share the number one tip that I have for correcting your backhand surfing and helping with a lot of the problems that we do have when we're surfing on our backhand. We'll also provide some examples of that. So let's get into that now. A lot of the time when we're surfing on our forehand, our chest is already facing the direction that we want to be facing, which makes things a lot easier. You can see when we're on our forehand, we come into a really nice solid foundational position where our chest comes over our front foot and you can draw that line from your chest to your knee to your foot. This is a really good position to come into for your balance and it's something that's quite often missing from our backhand surfing. On our backhand, for one reason or another, we do tend to have our chest facing the beach, so sideways, which means we're too sideways facing and this brings on a multitude of problems. The first thing that happens is we lock up our stance. Now what this means is because our chest is facing towards the beach, so it's sideways, we often have, say this is the stringer, our heel and our toe directly over that stringer rather than at that nice 45 degree angle. Now the first thing that happens here is that we have a really difficult time uh, evenly or lightly distributing our weight forwards and backwards, which is a really important thing to do. It also becomes harder to shuffle ourselves upwards and backwards, just those little shuffles which we've spoken about before on the channel. And these are really important to make those small adjustments on the board. So if we're not able to do that, we're kind of stuck and our feet are in the same position the whole time on the board, um, which becomes a little bit of a problem if we're running into sections where we do need to be slightly further back or we do need to be slightly further forwards. So this is the first problem with that. The other thing with this stance is that our chest and our bottom or our hips are often overlaying one side of the board and the other. So again, if we're to crouch down and our chest is facing directly towards the beach, what's gonna happen is our chest is gonna come over that outside rail and the bottoms or our hips are gonna come over the inside rail. And so this is a recipe for disaster because we're not gonna be able to maintain our balance very, very well with this. What we'd ideally have is our uh, balance coming over the center of the board or over the stringer, but in this instance, we can't have that. The second thing that becomes really tricky is our subtle distribution of our weight forwards and backwards on the board. So again, spoken a fair bit about on the channel where we might having, be having to lean forwards to accelerate and gain our speed, and we might wanna lean backwards in order to slow down or turn. If we're facing our with our chest towards the beach, this becomes more of a sideways movement where we're distributing our weight sort of from the hips across, which becomes really tricky. Rather than utilizing that chest over the middle and the stringer of the board to slowly come forwards, slowly come backwards, which is a really nice way to filter your weight back and forth on the board. So this is the other area that we can run into a problem with. And leading on from this, if we do have our chest and our bottom over one side of the rail and the other, it's really difficult to maintain our balance and come into a great foundational balanced position. So this is something that we need to correct. And then lastly, it also limits our cross-stepping to a, to a large extent. If you think about wanting to shift our weights forwards and backwards, we're very limited if we're facing directly towards a side with how our hips are rotated. So we can't take big steps, which is a big problem that we'll come into in a second. So let's talk about the, uh, the solutions here. As you probably guessed at the moment, the biggest thing that we need to be focusing on for your backhand surfing is actually rotating that chest forwards towards where you're going rather than over the side of the board. And we'll speak about what this actually does. 
So the first thing that I do think that you'll notice straight away with this is that the surfing position will become a lot more familiar. It'll be more like you're surfing on your forehand in that same familiar position as opposed to the awkward sort of feeling that a lot of us get when we're trying to surf on our backhand. And this position itself will automatically target a lot of these issues that we've just run through. So for this, it's really important that you're rotating the hips and the chest both around to face towards the nose of the board, so where you're going. Another great cue for this is to make sure that you've got one hand on either side of the rail. Now, I don't do this all of the time in terms of I'm not always surfing with one hand exactly over either side of the rail, but a great example here is someone like Ethan Ewing. A great example is also some people like Joel Tudor and the um, great longboarders out there where um, if they're trying to gain speed or maintain balance, having that hand on either side of the rail is a big thing. So it really can help to stabilize your surfing quite a lot. But as I said, if we have the chest forwards, we don't exactly need one hand over either side of the rail, but it is really, really useful cue that I would definitely start out with. So as you can imagine, coming into this position helps massively with keeping your balance on point. If you think about where our chest is now, directed towards the nose, it should be right over the middle of the board. So the stringer, which we know is the most stable part of the board to come into. Um, if we do have our chest forwards as well, we should be able to draw that line from our chest, knee to toe. And then we've got all of our weight into the middle of the board, which is where we know we're going to be balanced and uh, gaining as most speed as possible as well. So this is gonna be a great improvement in terms of your balance and stability from when you had your chest facing over the side of the board, if that was something that you were doing. I find it's also extremely helpful for more subtly filtering weight from your front to back foot. So rather than all or nothing on the back foot, all or nothing on the front foot, what we can actually see is that we can more subtly uh, bring weight forwards or backwards because that chest can slowly move forwards and backwards between both feet uh, to allow that to happen rather than your sideways movements of the hips which I find are just less accurate and with that foot positioning as well we can actually have weight coming from the heel to the uh, toe on the foot on the front foot or the back foot which again is just a nicer more subtle way to distribute your weight it's just something that I think makes a little bit of a difference there as well this positioning is also probably the most important thing to opening up our ability to cross step properly. I'd like you to think about, and I'll show an example here as well, is if our hips are sideways, we're going to be doing sort of like a, a grapevine cross step. Now inevitably with this, because our hips aren't forwards and we can't uh, project our step further forwards as well, those steps are going to be really, really narrow. And there's a number of things that I see going wrong with the cross steps, and that's one of them for, for the most part. So if we have our hips forwards, now we can project ourselves forwards using our chest coming forwards over the stringer and make sure that that step's a little bit bigger as well which we know broad stance is always going to be really useful for your stability narrow stance is going to throw away a lot of that uh, base of support so a really important part of this as well so rotating that chest forwards not only good for weight distribution and balance but also for your cross stepping as well so overall i think this is a big tip that can help a lot of people i hope that you take a little bit of this and push it into your next session um, and hopefully it'll start to make you feel a little bit more natural on your uh, on your back end now of course as all of this stuff does, it takes time, it takes practice. So frequency with a lot of this, getting this out and getting the repetitions out in the water is gonna be super, super important. So just get out there and give it a go um, over time. Hopefully straight away you do notice that it opens you up a little bit better, allows you to balance a little bit better, but backhand surfing typically feels a little bit odd at the start anyway. So just keep going with it. Um, if you do have any questions in the meantime as you're practicing this, please just get in contact with me. Give us a comment in the comments below or uh, message me on my uh, email or Instagram or something like that. And I'd be happy to have a chat about some of this. And of course we do online coaching as well if you did want any help with that further because um, hopefully it's a really, really good, I guess, key that will open up a lot of stuff for your surfing um, as I've found with people so far. So hopefully you can have some success with that and give it a go in your next session. And I guess what got me thinking about this was on my trip to National Titles, I actually, we got some great waves down there, kind of mid New South Wales coast um, at this perfect right hand point break, um, which we'll go into now, but just got me thinking about how surfing rights a lot in my kind of younger years um, allowed me to really get quite comfortable with this and the positions that I do adopt. And I guess thinking about the best things or the, the number one component that, that I think really helped my surfing. So hopefully you guys can take something away from this edit as well. Big things to watch out for are just going to be how that forwards chest position uh, is going to be helpful 
responsible for bringing myself into a really balanced position, um, making sure that I have my chest and hips opened up to cross step, and then just subtly kind of filtering weight backward and forwards for turns and just to make sure I'm maintaining and getting as much speed as possible on the wave. So there's some things to keep an eye out for, but let's get into the edit. Thanks so much for watching guys. Again, I hope that was a good one and I hope you found it useful. Apply it to your surfing and uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to come back and ask us some questions about that. Um, happy to run through some of that with you. We'll have tip time coming up this Wednesday. So if you have any questions, please leave those in the comments below and we might be able to get to that on the next segment there. Um, but otherwise, we've got uh, another episode of the Sunday Glide coming up in a week's time. Other than that, hope you guys are all getting waves and we'll catch you on the next one. Yoop.